Hello, my name is Janet Hong, and I'm a Korean to English translator based in Vancouver, Canada. And today I'm here with Hasung Lan, who is in Seoul, Korea. 안녕하세요, 선생님. 네, 안녕하세요, 하성란입니다. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. Hasunglan. <laughs> Hasunglan is the author of five short story collections, four novels, and three serialized novels that are currently being revised to come out in book form, as well as several essay collections. Uh, today, we'll be reading an excerpt from The Star Shaped Stain, the opening story from Bluebeard's First Wife, which was published last year by Open Letter and went on to become one of Publishers Weekly's top 10 books of 2020. Uh, before we start, I would like to mention that this story, sadly, is based on an actual fire that took place um, at a summer educational camp for young children in 1999, claiming the lives of 19 children and four adults. As a mother of two young children, I had a very difficult time translating this story. Um, I cried while translating it, and though it's been fictionalized, I feel that the story is incredibly important and necessary. Uh, we'll now read from the section where those parents who had lost their children visit the site of the fire one year later. Um, we'll alternate reading with Ha Sung Lan reading the Korean first and then me following in English. 흉물스러웠던 건물의 잔해는 이미 깨끗하게 치워진 후였다. 건물이 있던 자리에도 어느새 자풀이 무성했다. 건물 바로 앞에 있던 수영장은 채 메우지 못한 모양이었다. 수심이 깊은 쪽에 고인 빗물이 썩고 있었고 언제 죽었는지 흠신 젖은 산비둘기 한 마리가 둥둥 떠 있었다. The wreckage had long been cleared away and where the building once stood was now thick with weeds. The swimming pool had never been filled up. A dead pigeon floated in the fetid rainwater that had collected at the deep end. 바닷물이 빠지면서 누군가 뛰어놓은 작은 배한 척이 개펄 중앙에 박혀 있었다. 아이가 여름 캠프를 가던 전날 여자는 다마신 음료수 페트병에 주둥이를 잘라내고 양쪽의 구멍을 뚫어 노끈을 달았다. 캠프 일정표에 적힌 대로라면 아이들은 페트병을 하나씩 메고 개펄에 들어가 조개나 개를 잡았을 것이다. 아이는 다 만든 페트병을 목에 걸고 공동되면서 개를 가득 잡아오겠다고 좋아했었다. As the tide went out, it left behind a small boat stuck in the middle of the mud flat. The day before their daughter had left for summer camp, the woman had cut off the mouth of a plastic bottle and punched holes in its side, then threaded a cord through them and tied the ends together. If everything had gone according to plan, the children would have taken their plastic bottles and gone digging in the silt for clams and crabs. With the bottle hanging from her neck, her daughter had hop hopped up and down in excitement, saying she was going to fill it with crabs. 바라점이었던 비동 건물 204호가 있던 자리를 찾는 것은 쉽지 않았다. 몇 명의 남자들과 여자들이 어림 짐작으로 자리를 짚어대면서 옥신각신했다. 돗자리를 깔고 간단하게 상이 차려졌다. 아이들의 사진을 일렬로 세워놓았다. 사진 앞에 미키마우스 봉제 인형과 모터 자동차 같은 아이들이 평소에 좋아하던 장난감이 놓였다. It was not easy to find where room 204 of building B had been. Several parents moved from spot to spot, guessing and arguing over the correct location. A mat was rolled out on the ground and a simple memorial table was set up. They li lined up the frames in a row. Favorite toys like stuffed dolls and toy cars were placed before the children's pictures. Huni 엄마가 냉방이 잘된 버스 안에서 이미 차갑게 식은 양념 통닭을 사진 앞에 펼쳐 놓다가 맨바닥에 주저앉았다. 희미한 여자의 아이 사진 앞에 발효가 잘된 찐빵 같은 국화 다발을 놓아두던 남편이 정수리 위에 떠 있는 태양을 노, 노려보았다. 해를 가려줄 그늘 한점 없었다. 눈물이 흐른 밤에 허연 소금 자국이 남았다. 갈라터진 입술에 눈물이 닿으면서 화닥거렸다. 
Hoon's mother placed a sweet and sour chicken, now cold from the air-conditioned bus, in front of her son's picture and sank to the ground. Before their daughter's blurry photo, the woman's husband placed a bouquet of white chrysanthemums, the ones that had reminded the girl of steamed buns, and glared up at the sun blazing above his head. The sky contained not even a speck of cloud. Tears left salt streaks on the woman's cheeks. Her cracked lips stung from the salt. 화재는 야영장 숙소 세동 가운데 가운데 동인 비동 204호에서 시작되어 삽시간에 건물 한 동을 집어삼켰다. 그 시간 204호에는 오랜 시간의 여행 때문에 일찌감치 고라떨어진 아이들만 남아 있었다. 산이라 모기가 많았다. 선생은 방 한가운데 모기향을 피워두고 자리를 비웠다. 온갖 소문들이 떠다녔다. 아이들이 밖으로 나오지 못하도록 방문이 밖에서 걸려 있었다고 했다. 아이들이 잠자고 있는 사이 선생들은 바닷가에 나가 술을 마시고 있었다고도 했다. The fire started in room 204 of building B, the middle structure of three, and it swallowed up the entire place in seconds. Inside room 204, children exhausted from the day's travel and activities lay fast asleep. Because the campsite was in a mountainous area, there were many mosquitoes. The teacher had left after lighting a mosquito repellent coil in the middle of the room. Rumors spread. The room was locked from the outside to prevent the children from wandering out. The teachers had left the kids sleeping on their own and were drinking out on the beach. 선생들이 연기와 타는 냄새를 맡고 뛰어왔을 때 불은 이미 걷잡을 수 없이 번진 후였다. 복도 맨 끝방인 204호 앞에는 화기와 매캐한 연기 때문에 접근할 수도 없었다. 204호에는 새별 유치원 개나리 반 22명의 아이들이 잠자고 있었다. 화이는 어이없게도 모기향이라고 했다. By the time they smelled the smoke and came running, the fire had raged out of control. It was impossible for anyone to get near room 204, located at the end of the hallway. Inside the room, 22 students from the Forsythia class of Morning Star Kindergarten had been sleeping. The cause of the fire was a mosquito coil. 여자가 사고 현장으로 갔을 때 이미 불은 진화된 후였다. 불타 허물어진 건물 속에는 그름이 잔뜩 끼었고 벽은 녹아 흐물어져 있었다. 내장재가 다 타고 드러난 컨테이너 박스가 몰고 사나웠다. 재와 소방차가 뿜어낸 물이 뒤범벅된 검게 탄속 같은 건물 앞에서 여자는 아이의 이름을 불러대다가 혼절했다. 여자의 아이는 22명의 희생자 중한 명이었다. By the time the woman arrived at the scene, the fire was already put out. The building had collapsed in a heap of ashes and the walls had melted away, exposing the skeletal metal frames of the cargo containers. She stood in front of the black wreckage and howled her daughter's name until she fainted. Her child had been one of the 22 lost in the fire. 여자는 흰 국화 뒤에서 흐릿하게 웃고 있는 아이의 사진을 들여다보았다. 유난히 시간 외 근무가 많은 직장이었다. 퇴근을 하고 부랴부랴 유치원으로 뛰어가면 아이들이 다 돌아간 한 구석에 아이가 잠들어 있었다. 잠투정하는 아이를 최근에 집으로 돌아올 때면 고단한 일과 때문에 허리가 끊어지는 것 같았다. 이것저것 구경하느라 뒤처지는 아이의 등을 핸드백으로 사정없이 쳐대면 아이는 제게 걸으면서 소리 없이 훌쩍였다. 아이의 소원은 제 엄마가 은행에 다니는 것이었다. 같은 반에 은행에 다니는 엄마를 둔 아이가 있는데 그 아이 엄마는 늘 일찍 퇴근해 아이를 데리고 간다고 했다. 일요일이나 휴일이면 밀린 잠을 자느라 아이를 데리고 놀이공원 같은 곳에 간 적이 없었다. 10시쯤 늦지막히 잠에서 깨면 아이는 제 부모 발치에 앉아 우유에만 시리얼을 먹고 있었다. The woman gazed at the blurry photo of her smiling daughter. Her job had required an unusual amount of overtime. 
Whenever she had rushed to the kindergarten after work, she had found her daughter sleeping in a corner of the room and the rest of the children gone. As she urged the sleepy child home, she was so exhausted she felt as if her spine would snap. So when her daughter would lag behind to look at every little thing, she would smack her in the back with her purse. The girl would then sniffle quietly as she followed. Her daughter had wished that she worked at a bank instead. In her kindergarten class, there had been a classmate whose mother worked at a bank. She always got picked up early. Too busy catching up on sleep during the holidays and weekends, the woman never once took her daughter to an amusement park. When she'd wake around 10 in the morning, her daughter would be sitting by her feet, eating a big bowl of cereal. 아이가 죽었다는 것을 인정하고 나자 부모들은 아이의 시신을 하루빨리 인도받고 싶어 했다. 하지만 아이의 시신도 곧바로 돌려받을 수 없었다. 시신이 심하게 훼손되어 누가 누구인지 식별할 수가 없었다. 아이들은 똑같은 색깔과 디자인의 원복을 입고 있었고 키가 고만고만한 여섯 살반 아이들이었다. 아이의 온전한 모습을 다시는 볼수 없다는 소식에 엄마들은 가슴을 쥐어뜯다가 정신을 놓았다. Once the parents were able to accept that their children were gone, they wanted to claim the bodies as quickly as possible. But it was nearly impossible to identify the bodies which were burned beyond recognition. The six-year-olds had been wearing identical outfits and they had been more or less the same height. At the news that they would not be able to see their children's bodies intact again, the mothers beat their chests and swooned. 경찰이 나눠준 종이에 여자는 아이의 특징에 대해 단한 단어도 적지 못했다. 여자의 아이는 손가락이나 발가락에 사막이나 그 흔한 점 하나 없었다. 다른 아이와 구별할 수 있는 흉터 같은 것도 없었다. 출근 시간에 쫓겨 머리를 빗길 시간이 없다는 핑계로 항상 머리를 짧게 잘라 머리를 묶었던 머리 장식 같은 것도 있을 리 없었다. 충치 때문에 보철물을 해준 적도 없었다. 여자의 아이가 다른 아이들과 변별되는 그 어떤 실마리도 찾을 수 없었다. 여자의 아이는 정말 평범한 아이였다. 별로 주목을 받지 못했던 여자의 아이는 그 여름 연일 신문 일면을 장식했던 야영장 화재 사건의 희생자 중한 명으로 특징 지어졌다. The woman wasn't able to write down a single distinguishing trait about her child on the form that the police distributed. The girl didn't have a wart or even a birthmark on her fingers or toes. She didn't have any scars either. Her hair had been kept short since there was never enough time to comb or style it in the morning. So of course there would be no special accessories in her hair that would help tell her apart from the other children. She never had cavities that would have required her to get fillings and she didn't have braces. There wasn't a single clue the woman would think of, woman could think of, that would distinguish her daughter from the rest of the children. The girl was truly ordinary in every way, but this girl who had never received much attention earned her greatest distinguishing trait that summer. When she became one of the victims of the tragic fire that filled the front page of the newspaper for days. Uh, thank you for joining us for this reading. I hope you'll pick up your copy of Blue Witch First Wife um, and read the rest of the story, um, as well as the other incredible stories in the collection. Thank you again. 감사합니다, 선생님. 네, 진이 고생하셨어요. 감사합니다. <laughs>